Okay, so one time I had a dumb idea. That dumb idea was this. Green's theorem takes line integrals, right? And converts them into area integrals. But it doesn't actually do that. It gives you a relationship between line integrals and area integrals, right? So there is no particular reason that you are bound to that direction. You could also do this thing, where you go from an area integral to a line integral. OK, so that said, this is going to be a little tough. because. So here's my idea. I have an area integral, and I'm just going to assume that everything here satisfies the uh, the assumptions of greens, right? So I need continuous partials for P and Q. I need a region D with a boundary, and that boundary has to be the boundary has to be simple. It has to be closed. It has to be counterclockwise oriented, and it has to be piecewise. You guys all good with that? So I'm assuming I have a region D with such a boundary. And I would like to do the simplest possible example where I would like to integrate 1 over that area. Oh. Right? This should not be that hard. We should be able to pull this off. <laughs> so if this is what you get on the outside of greens, right? Like this is the area side of greens. I should be able to convert this into some kind of line integral over C, right? Mm -hmm. Of like a F dr. something dx plus something dy, right? You guys all see that? So what's this this inner part in greens? What's that made out of in your area integral? Partial q. Let me say that very precisely. What is the integrand in the area side of greens? Are you asking for partial of q over x? That's partial q with respect to x minus partial p with respect to y, right? OK, so I'm thinking, OK, hey, if 1 is that stuff, oh, it seems like I get a choice, <laughs> right? You guys see that? Like, There's a couple ways for me to do this, I think. So I'm going to make some choices for Q and P. So what's the most obvious choice? X and Y. Make Q, X. And P, uh, 0. Or and P, yeah, 0 is probably the easiest one. Keep in mind, this is a tool you're making, right? Mm -hmm. You may as well make it easy to use. You guys all see that? Mm -hmm. So one possible choice of P and Q is X and 0. So I can, instead of writing this as something dx, that's going to be 0, right? So I could just write this as the integral over C of X dy. You guys see that? What's another choice you could make here? The other way around. Yeah, kind of the other way around. So if you do 0 and Y, what do you get? Y dx. Uh, yeah, but 0 and y doesn't actually work up here. Negative. Oh, sorry. Ne so you need a negative, negative y, right? You guys all see that? Mm -hmm. So apparently, this is also minus the integral over c of y dx. Weird. You guys see that? Uh, please don't take this statement home with you. Oh, right? gosh. Because the fact that these are equal is only because I'm going through this in the middle. Right? Like those two, those two things are in general equal for curve C, but only if your vector field's 1, right? Mm -hmm. So. Be a little careful with that. You're not likely to run across one of those in a while. Cool this? So by that I mean you're not likely to run across a case where taking knowing that 
the integral over a curve of x dy is the same thing as minus y dx integrated over that curve? That's not going to help you. What is going to help you is to know that that line integral is the area of the region you're talking about. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. So there's one more choice you could make. You could like split things halfway, right? Like instead of putting all your eggs in the Q basket or all your things in the P basket, you could put half and half, right? So how would you do half and half? 2xy or something like that? You do x over 2, right? And negative y over 2. So apparently this is also equal to the integral of oops, negative y over 2 dx plus x over 2 dy. Oh, I said earlier that the vector field was 1, but I was being crazy. Which part of this is the vector field? These ones, right? In here, the vector field is 0, comma x. In here, the vector field is minus y, comma 0. And in here, the vector field is negative y over 2, comma x over 2, right? You guys see that? Those three very special vector fields will help you the same amount around the curve. You guys see that? Okay. okay, what is the facility of this thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it is maybe not immediately obvious. There is an engineering thing about this. You can use this to make an engineering tool. I have one in a box in my office. Oh, is it the level? Or? No, so this thing makes a, this makes a thing called a planometer. Which my my wife calls a plan of meter because they used it on plans. This is a tool you can use. It's a it's a little gizmo that's got a like some kind of a rod and some kind of an elbow and then a little dial and a little cursor at the end. Oh, that's, that's and this is I kid you not a fully analog device. And what it does is it allows you to trace around some rando curve, right? And it'll tell you the area enclosed in that curve. But it's totally analog. So if you want to know how big someone's fields are, and you don't want to do all the goddamn trigonometry to sort out all the little triangles that they've got, you just trace it with this thing. So I kid you not, if you go to the USDA's offices, they have these in closets. And every once in a while, they'll get one out. Because whoever's land boundaries aren't in ArcGIS, but they have a map. So they just trot this little thing out and trace the boundary of this person's land, and it just rolls around, and it'll give you the area in acres. You guys see that? It's super cool. It's small though, right? They don't like have a gigantic thing that like traces the land down. No, no, it's little. It's about this big. Uh, okay. They use it on a map of the land, not on the actual land. Yeah, it rolls. This thing has to roll on the ground, and it's yeah, that would be crazy big. Okay, bonus points if you build one of these that's at least a hundred feet long. I just want to see it work once. <laughs> it would only be good in extremely flat places. <laughs> we can you guys set cool with this? Like I mean, I'm not getting this close points, but I'm cool with it. So the idea, right, is that you take that, right, you take that area integral that you're trying to calculate, you're trying to calculate what the area of their land is, and you turn it into this funny thing that adds up the x as you change dy. Cool? And most of these that you buy, like the one that's in my office, is actually polar, so you have to do this kind of funky conversion factor. But they make, they make ones that aren't polar. They're just Cartesian. And so it just rolls along. 
and there's no conversion factor necessary, there's just a dial. So does it just, if you move in the X, it won't add anything to the area? Yep, if you move in the X, it doesn't add anything in the area, but as you move in the Y, it adds the X value for every Y movement you make. You guys see that? Super cool, really neat. All right, cool, good deal. That's what